<laughs> Again, every time we catch me with food, what's going on? One second. Let me just murder my burger off and then we can get started with the tutorial, yeah. <laughs> okay, so food's been eaten. I always eat at the start of the video just because I eat a lot of food anyway, so. Welcome back to another video, guys. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to combine two pictures and turn them into one picture. <laughs> I don't know what I just did, but I'm basically going to show you how to remove the reflections using a polarizing filter from one side of the car and then how to do it on a different part of the car. Two separate pictures combined together to make one picture where there's least reflections. You need a CPL for this, so I'm gonna drop the clip in. So basically, with this clip that you see now, uh, this is the CPL, so if I twist it this way, you can see that obviously it's just moving. But if I show you an example in my front, I just I shot this clip out of my window. So if you can see the fact that the glass is obviously polarizing, and then the side of the car is like, as I'm turning the filter, you can see where it's affecting. So you can imagine what it would do on the on a photo shoot. Okay, so just before we get into the video, um, my channel's been growing very slowly and it does help anyone that's watching to literally just like tap the sub button, give this video a like. Hopefully these little videos I'm coming out with do get bigger and they grow a little bit more. But if there's any other sort of videos you wanna see, just literally drop me a comment. Follow me on Instagram, Lewis Morris Media. Drop me a DM, say I want to see this sort of video. Just give me ideas of stuff to do because I do want to start doing more YouTube because it's fun and I do like helping people and we can grow together and we can learn and improve and I'm dragging on, so let's do this. <laughs> when I screen record on the MacBook, because it's plugged in and obviously I'm running Lightroom then Photoshop, it sometimes pixelates. So you, you might see like a little bit of pixelation, but it's just because the laptop's running loads of apps so i'm going to try and find a smoother way to film my screen but at the minute this seems to be the only way i can do it right okay so first step is picking your two pictures that you've got so for this one i polarized for the glass that you can see here and then the next picture i polarized the filter for the back window and the side panels okay so front side as you can see so i'm in lightroom this is unedited okay so i'm gonna pick one of my presets from my pack link in description drop that plug <laughs> but as you can see these my five daytime presets pack these are obviously what it affects this shot uh shot at one over 60 one f.4 iso 80 with my samyang 35 mil so it's the daytime <coughs> half eight in the evening and as you can see, it was shot in uh, Sony RAW. Always shoot in RAW, don't ever shoot in JPEG. Don't ever question it. <laughs> Just don't shoot in JPEG. Don't ever shoot in JPEG. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna do another video on shooting JPEG and RAW just to explain the differences because people seem to ask me that question all the time and there's a massive difference. So as you can see out of these five presets, they all seem pretty decent. I'm gonna go for Moody Roller and I'm basically gonna bring the oranges down a little bit, a bit too strong, and the red. Okay, we're just gonna do a basic edit. I'm not gonna go too crazy in this. Let's bring the clarity down. Let's go for a different sort of vibe on this. Bring the highlights down in the sky. Okay, that's, let's say that that's what we want, okay? Obviously, don't crop the image. You don't wanna crop the image now because we still need to take these two photos into Photoshop. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure I've got the two pictures synced um, selected sorry and then all you're gonna do which you're happy with all the selections again don't crop it make sure it's original then next you're gonna sync uh, check all synchronize and then the picture next to it which is that one is now exactly the same settings which is what we want but on this image we're only taking the glass so it doesn't matter too much make sure these two pictures are selected right click you're gonna go to edit in open as layers in photoshop okay so what this is going to do is going to open both those pictures in photoshop as photoshop in photoshop as layers so we can play with the layers individually all we're going to do is combine them blend them together blend together did you ever used to do that in school wait what was it what was that thing you used to do in school i can't remember <laughs> So obviously these are the two pictures. They're obviously not in line. Select both pictures. Go to edit, auto blend, oh no, sorry. Auto align layers. Click auto and press okay. Don't have any of these clicked. And then if you click this off and on, normally Photoshop does a pretty good job at align aligning the pictures just because it's Photoshop and it's pretty good. <laughs> the best way to check this is take this top layer. You're gonna put the layer that's got the glass on you're gonna put that over the at the top so we're gonna name the uh, front okay 
So that's our glass front layer, okay? And then we don't need to name that one because we already know we've already named this one. So all you're gonna do from here is zoom into something that's got detail, like the Oz on the wheel. I'm gonna turn the opacity down on this top layer to about 54%. As you can see, they don't line up. All you're gonna do, make sure the layer's selected. Top left, so you wanna go to the move tool or control, um, or the shortcut is V. Then you can use the arrow keys from here. Just use the arrow keys and then move the layer till it lines up pretty much like there. So I always go up or down a little bit just to make sure. That's pretty sick. Command zero, and that's pretty much done. So if I turn that layer off and on, you can't really tell. Keep the layer on, glass front again. So again, we're only using, we only need the glass from this. So the way we do this, you're gonna go to down, down at the bottom. Don't go down to mask, click that. Then from here, you're gonna click, you're gonna press Command I. It's gonna turn this black, okay? Next, we're gonna get the brush. You can press B, there's the brush. You're gonna make sure that this, on the on the left hand side, this is the um, white and the black, okay? Make sure this top one is white because anything that's painted white comes into the image. So if I do that, if you look on this side, I've painted this side, I've painted this side of the image, as you can see that little white spot there. Yeah, make sure you're actually on the layer. Is I'm gonna get the lasso tool, I'm gonna get the second one down, and then I'm just gonna click pretty much around. Make sure it's like that. Now, press the brush, make sure it's white. I'm gonna click and drag over the glass. And I've painted in the polarized image onto that layer okay so if i press command d get rid of that before after before after that's literally it so we pretty much have a perfectly polarized image i could have done a little bit better on this side but again before after so now we've done this we're completed we don't need to do anything more because it's going on instagram it doesn't have to be mad perfect like you can't really tell any sort of imperfections really can you all you're going to do is press command s wait for the bottom left for it to save whilst it's saving it takes a good 30 seconds or so sometimes probably enough time to have another burger i might get back on delivery no i should stop it stop it okay it's saved we're going to command tab go back to lightroom and there we go boom so as you can see this image is now separate it's made its own PSD file in Lightroom, you can see that the sliders are all back to normal. So we don't really need to mess with it, which is very important to make sure you've done all your final adjustments and removed any of the spots on the floor and stuff like that. In my final image that I put on Instagram, which is here, as you can see, I actually removed a lot of the stuff on the floor, stones around the edges. So that's just my minor cleanup. Um, until I pointed out, you didn't even notice it. But I'm very particular, I'm quite a perfectionist when it comes to photoshopping stuff out in terms of like stones and twigs and stuff. It's just a habit that I have, but it cleans up the image and the subject is the car. And I only want my audience to look at the car, not the stone or the mud on the floor. You're gonna go to crop. Obviously, if this is going on Instagram, four by five, don't, don't do one by one. If you want the most space on the screen, four by five. We're gonna be careful of the edges because obviously it's trimmed off. And there we go, that's the full image that you're gonna see on Instagram. So the car's nice and clean, the windows and glass are polarized. You can obviously kind of you could obviously do more to this image if you wanted, but that's pretty much it. Like you'd export it, upload it, get a sick banger, get those likes in, get the DMs rolling, get people asking for shoots. And it's just a good technique. So it genuinely is a good technique that I've recently started using. I've got a lot of replies to my Instagram stories of photographers are literally saying I've never thought about doing this. So there you go. We learn all the time. I'm hoping these videos do help you guys like to improve your skills. It's all about getting out there and just shooting. It's hard at the minute because we are in this pandemic. I hate saying that word. Again, I do have my links in the description for my um, store for my presets. As you, as you can see when I scrolled through them, you can go back in the video and have a look at what it affects. You can see that all five of those all five of those presets are pretty sick in terms of the daytime settings. So that always helps me and supports me, supports the channel. I can make more videos. I can put more money back into my gear to make better videos for you lot to watch, which is sick. So yeah, I'm going to go get some more food because I'm generally already hungry. I've got to feed these gains. <laughs> So if you did like this video, just literally do me a little favor, click the like button. If you didn't like it, press the dislike. I won't go against you, I don't mind. Drop a comment below. Let me know what you think. What, do, what video do you want to see next? More importantly, click the subscribe button, support the channel, support me, and I'll see you guys in the next video.